The thoughts and views expressed in this podcast are solely for entertainment purposes. Hey, fuck you, man! This being said, it is likely that people of different races, religions, sexual orientations, and hair colors, amongst others, will be offended. Oh, I'm sorry, did I break your concentration? This is not our intent. Now listen to me very carefully. If you are easily offended, this is not a podcast for you. However, if you're still with us, then buckle up, bitches, because it's time for a show! Now, whatever your name is... Get ready for the big surprise. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubblegum. <laughs> yeah, had I known it, it might have been a good one. FBI shows up. Knock, knock. Mr. Bieber, we uh, we have reports that your pilots are having to wear fucking oxygen masks because there's so much fucking smoke on the plane. And the only thing that I could think the whole entire time that I'm laughing at all these, I'm thinking of Ace of Base. Like my good friend, Lord Alfred Hayes would always say, promotional consideration paid for by the following. All right, fuckers, we're back. It's been a while. It's been a while. No, oh, but seriously, we're back. Um, I know when we started this, we said we were going to be doing it twice a month, and we will be doing it twice a month, but unfortunately, sometimes life happens, or as they say, shit happens. Um, dude, what twice a month, dude? I do it every day. No. Oh, no. you're talking about podcasting. I'm talking about oh, the fucking bad. show. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. I'm explaining uh, never mind. because we've been getting, we've been getting bombarded. And, and the love is tremendous, and we thank you all very much for listening and being a part of the family, but we've been getting bombarded with questions. What's going on? Are you guys still doing it? What's happening? Where are you guys at? How come you're not doing the show? We miss all the free yucks. Well, guess what? We're back. The weather had a few of us sidelined for a while. Luster had some things he has to take care of today, so he will not be with us, but he will be back when we do our next. And he's with us in spirit. Though. He is with us in spirit. Luster travels and I'm- like the bird flu. <laughs> or the swine flu if it's it, it, fly. Depending, I mean, you never know. depending on your region depending on your region but um <laughs> yeah man so fuck i'm not i'm not a big sports guy but you know it, the super bowl just kind of blew through uh, and i knew i knew bowl. lester uh, i knew was, lester was going to be kind of your super bowl your super bowl your super bowl uh, your super bowl buddy isn't here today, so um, <laughs> Look, I know dude, it was... of all the words that you should be able to say, "bowl" is one of them. Hey, you know you because I love cereal. <laughs> I love cereal, and of course you can't eat cereal out of a, off a plate. You know, so right. Bowl breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and I know how important it is to you. Most important meal of the day, my friend. The most. important. That's why you should never ever have a problem saying that word. Never, ever, ever, ever. ever. It's been a while. No. Okay. Speaking of the Super Bowl. <laughs> go. Super Bowl. Greg. Blue ass. Super Bowl. Greg, go. Dude, it sucked. 43-8. to eight, Seattle blew out Denver. Now, I don't really care which team won because I'm not a fan of either one. Mm-hmm. I would have liked to see Peyton Manning win the Super Bowl because, uh, you know, he went from the whole Indianapolis Colts and being out for a year with a neck injury and having three surgeries, going to Denver, turn them around, get them to the playoffs two years in a row. They had a record-setting offense this year. They totally deserved the Super Bowl, but they didn't play like it. They choked. They just sucked it up. Um, apparently, from what I understand, is that the Super Bowl was... Really? No. <laughs> yeah, number 25. Right, yeah. So the, this guy now, not even a week later... He's been seen by many, many people in Vegas dancing it up and having a good old fucking time. And he's coming off a high ankle sprain. I don't know. What are your thoughts? 
Uh, high ankle sprains really aren't all that severe. They suck and, and they hurt, but you have to remember a couple of things. They go through treacherous training. So that, sure. Um, My thought have, was he could have just been dancing on one foot. Maybe he's just got really good balance. Maybe he's doing the bunny hop. I don't know. Possibility. Could be a midget um, stripper underneath the table, could, giving him a little boost, maybe? Yeah, he could have been dancing on a stripper pole himself and had one leg up. <laughs> You know, I don't know. Maybe he's good at the splits, holding one leg up over his head. Uh, but um, no, in, in all seriousness, um, I, I'm sure that he probably had his ankle wrapped. Uh, sure, and then he, and, and to the Super guy, champion, I don't know. So. I don't know the. You know, I don't know the guy. But um, you know, to his credit, they just won the fucking Super Bowl. You know, so right. I'm sure his energy and the atmosphere is probably pulling him through a little bit of pain. So I think people the, just need to. The hard time that I had was that he was such a dick the week before that I didn't right. want to cheer for him. Right, I, right, right. I really didn't want to cheer for him. He was and he was the guy. He was the guy at the end of the game going off the field on the back of the cart. Right, that was him. <laughs> no, was that him? No. no, that wasn't him. That was somebody else. No, he he got taken off the field, uh, I believe, on a cart, but not like at the end of the. I I, I really don't remember. I was uh, I was trying to drink a lot and yeah. forget. Yeah, it uh, really did. It turned into a, like a family social event for me uh, because I was over at. My mom's watching it, and they had you know some company over, folks I haven't seen in a while, so it was good to catch up. I really right. wasn't even paying attention to the game. The only thing that caught my attention during that whole game was that fucking Radio Shack commercial where they had the whole <laughs> 80s montage. The 80s called, that, and they watch your store back. That was awesome. That was great. <laughs> that yeah, I left my ass awesome. off. Every other commercial, I was snoozing. Uh, if I would have been, like, nah. been in a conversation with somebody, I... I, I, I'm sure there were good ones. I'm sure other people are out there like pulling their hair out going, what about this one? What about that one? I'm just saying to me, the 80s Radio Shack one really caught my attention. And then again, I just kind of tuned out and I was having conversations in the room. So it was really just kind of, you know, white noise after a certain point. All right. But, here's uh, my thought. And, 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 and you, you segued great into to the commercials. Here's my thought on the commercials. Thank you. Thank you, sir. But then don't get used to it. It's the only compliment you're getting for the rest of the fucking show. Now shut up. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> um, Super Bowl commercials were, were okay. I mean, they weren't uh, all drag out, knock out funny. Uh, they Doritos weren't the Super Bowl commercials fail. in 1999, I think. That was the year. No, Doritos uh, failed. They, they weren't really that funny. They, were, they, were, they made me smile, but they weren't like hilarious like they right. were to start off with, with the pug knocking the screen over a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Pepsi wasn't really that great, but there were a couple funny ones. Uh, the Dan and Greek yogurt commercial with uh, uh, John Stamos with the appearance of Danny Tanner and uh, oh. Joey. And that speaking was kind of funny. Speaking of that full house bit, just to get off the Super Bowl real quick, did you see that clip from Jimmy Fallon when the three of them got back together and cut a little skit with Jimmy Fallon as like, he was yes. acting like a kid in bed, and like all three of them, and it was on the set of like one of the like, little kids' rooms from the TV show. <laughs> yeah, I did see that. that was and funny. side note, I am really excited to see Jimmy Fallon going to the Tonight Show. Yeah, you know what? With my with my schedule, I I really don't get to watch the Tonight Show just because I'm up, you know, before the sun, and um, I'm happy for him. I mean, that's I mean that's stuff. Right. I mean, how many how many people have had that spot? Like since five, the, five, right? Yeah, so. Instantly, he's now in an echelon where he was mm-hmm. far away from before. And uh, well, he, I mean, he, he's he, got a, he's got a great following. I think he'll do a great job. He's got a great show. His shows are hilarious. Uh, I DVR'd one of his, his like his best of Jimmy Fallon shows, and it's hilarious. Like it's yeah. an absolute uh, hip buster. I laugh throughout the entire thing. Every skit he does has made me laugh. But I mean, it's really cool. I'm glad he's going there. I watched the final episode of Jay Leno. Um, didn't really care much for him. I didn't dislike Jay Leno, but I didn't really care. Like, it didn't bother me that he was leaving. And then literally the last three minutes of the show, like, Jay Leno came out. Like, the real Jay Leno came out, and you, you saw, like, genuine, real human being. And he got emotional, and he was crying and, like, happy and, and sad and angry all at the same time. It was, it was kind of a moving moment for uh, late-night television. So I thought it was cool, but February seventeenth, Jimmy Fallon on the Tonight Show coming back as he um, as he should have some emotions, man. I mean, how long? Sure. How long? Twenty-two has he been? years. 
Yeah. 22 years. Time, second longest run in, in uh, tonight's show history. That's a long time. Yeah. Um, yep. One more quick, oh. fun, fun uh, Super Bowl fact, and then I'll let you kind of get more into the the realness the of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so as you know, you know, the Internet is, is here for many, many wonderful things. Uh, you know, researching, <laughs> watching TV Born. shows, maybe on Hulu Plus. It could be indulging in some adult entertainment. Um, one indulging. Such, one, such, one such website, Greg, um, a website that goes by the name of Pornhub.com. Notice a spike. <laughs> Notice a spike in their website traffic in Colorado following the Super Bowl. Well, it looks like Denver got to beat something after all. <laughs> Way to throw one in there. Way to dig one in on him. <laughs> I will say, you know, I, I, I got to say one thing about Sherman, since you mentioned Sherman a minute ago. I, I give Sherman a lot of credit for being a stand-up guy after Peyton Manning was a real stand-up guy. Because how Sherman hurt himself and, and high ankle sprain, couldn't finish the game. First thing Peyton Manning did at the end of the game was sought out Sherman and asked him how he was doing. If he was going to be all right, is he okay? And Sherman like came out and said that Peyton Manning is the classiest guy ever. He wished that he could be as good as him. I just gave him all the credit in the world. That was cool. I, I give him some props for that. Otherwise, fuck him. I, know, I, thought, <laughs> I, I thought you'd get a kick out of that Pornhub site story. Yeah, that was nice. Um, <laughs> you, when you combine Super Bowl talk, porn talk, all in one joke, right. I mean, you're doing good. That's a you're doing good. That's a winner. Hey, I'm <laughs> gonna take this shit on the road in a fucking in a couple months. Um, so I'm flipping through. I'm flipping through the channels as I do typically on a Sunday, because Sundays tend to be one of my two fun days. Um, working a Tuesday through Saturday schedule. Flipping through the channels, have you seen this shit with Dean Kane? The show he's doing now called Bigfoot Bounty. $10 million really? Bigfoot bounty. Really? Really. Yeah, I, I saw a preview for that, but I didn't really watch it. Guess what? Spoiler Cause... alert. They haven't found shit yet. <laughs> <laughs> now, hold what on a second. Before you, before you get Come started on. on more talk shows. Where's the I, next? I got... Where's the ne- what's next? The fishing show in Scotland? You know? <laughs> Hooking a lure for, uh, what the fuck's the, Loch Ness- Nessie? <laughs> I, I have commercials to talk about before you go okay. on to another go ahead. segment. Go ahead. I'm still, I'm just, I'm on that, uh, I'm on that mode. So go ahead. What you got? I, I know you are. I know you are. Uh, let's see. Another favorite commercial of mine was the Audi commercial with the, the Dober Ch- uh, Wawa. Like they combined the Dober a Doberman's Chihuahua? head and a, a Chihuahua's body. Okay. And he like ran all over the place. It was kind of stupid funny. Right, right, right. Um, As a Dober Chihuahua was, is. Right. Um, something that really caught my eye was the Budweiser commercial, um, with the, the heroes welcome home. That really hit me hard. Sure. That was really cool. I get that. Uh, the, the puppy adoption commercial was really funny, really cool. Um, something that was, I really liked was Cheerios taking it one step further with the commercial that there was a whole bunch of, uh, bullshit about, about how, um, the, there was a white mother and a black father in the commercial. Uh-huh. And the daughter was mixed. Like there was a whole bunch of controversy about it. Really? Over the last year and a half. I just I was just hearing I was just hearing some noise about the uh the Coca Cola commercial. I must have missed it. Oh I must have missed that it. That pissed I, me off too. Because that really right, they're pissed singing me off. they're singing America the Beautiful in different languages. Is that in a whole bunch of different languages. Right. Now I get the I get the idea that America is about a bunch of different cultures. Yes. I'm not disputing that and I'm yeah. not being racist towards no, any you, of the cultures. You, nor, you know, neither of us. <laughs> I couldn't find my but word. at the same time, when you're talking about America, the country is, is an English country. Right. I understand that we are all foreigners. Right. We are not from this country. Even though we were born here, we are not from this country. This sure. is the American Indian land, blah, blah, blah. I'm not getting into a debate on the culture of this country. I'm sure the blah, blah, blah. It's an blah, American. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you I feel like you fit blah, into blah, a blah, 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 blah category, this one's for you. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's what I was trying to say. I got See, you. You understood. I, you. I get it. I get it. But when you're singing America the Beautiful. Right. 
an, a song written about the United States of America, yes. an English country, yes. you, don't, you don't do it in different languages. Now, if you want to show that commercial with different cultures right. while singing the whole song in English, yes. I'm all about that because about that's it. exactly what this country is. Right. This country right. is different cultures. Yeah, it's a big fucking so, that's my problem with it. Right. Don't sing the, an American that, song well, no, in you're a not, different language. You're not, uh, you're not the lone voice shouting in a dark field. You know, a lot of people, no, I, a lot of people are saying the same thing you are, man. And I mean, it makes sense. And I, I, I can see both sides of it. And you know, it is what it is. So I just right. wanted to get your take on that. And, and I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm racist when I, when I say something. But at the same time, I'm you not. Know, you know, you know, I, I'm, you, you know, I'm cutting that and putting it in the beginning of the fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> Your dick. Oh, love it, podcasting. If you want to keep me going on an angry spree, go ahead no, and cut into no, that next we're, segment. No, we'll, no we'll go save, ahead and cut we'll into save, that next segment. We'll save this for the fucking. We'll save this for the bonus pod where we get fucking really dark and people have to pay money to hear that shit. Um, so hey, Greg, check this out. The Bermuda Triangle is no longer a threat, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. They say that because there is no hard evidence of mysterious disappearances, then there is no danger. Well, no shit. You think they fucking left a note? You know, like, it's a mysterious disappearance. No fucking shit. There's no hard evidence. Jesus Uh, Christ. Warning, America, we're going to disappear. Just wanted to let you know. Just, yeah, don't wait up. (laughs) Don't leave a fucking sandwich because the bread's going to get stale because we're not coming back because we got sucked into a different fucking dimension rift. And now that's like, you ever see the movie Jet Li, the one? That's yes. not fucking fiction, man. That's all. That's that's based off a true story. Not a lot of people know. Not a lot of people know. Don't tell a lot of people. Oh, shit, we're on a podcast. But if you're hearing this, you're now contractually fucking obligated not to say anything. It's going to be like a jury and a judge. Uh, please remove the last 30 seconds from your your thought. Yeah. And we are all now stupider for listening to it. So, um, like, the, the 1,200 um, planes and uh, ship parts that are scattered all around that area right. are an evidence that something's right. going on? Right. They say that because there's no hard evidence of mysterious disappearances. That's what gets me, is that they say... <laughs> that, that, what fucking gets me is that that sentence now exists in the universe. <laughs> you know, like, well, no and, and you know what? On top of that... If it doesn't, if it's not true, and it's that's not a possibility of it happening, how come the FAA will not allow planes to fly through that area in commercial right. flights? Well, I mean, probably one of the most well known well known incidents, Greg, was when Flight 19, a squad of five U.S. Navy torpedo bombers, left out of Fort oh. Lauderdale back in the fifties, never to return. Yep. Where the fuck they never go? to be found. No wreckage. They went nothing. Vacation. You know, some people they, say they went say, to Venus to figure shit out. <laughs> <laughs> don't wait up. Don't leave us a sandwich because the bread's going to get stale. Uh, aliens. Some people say it's a, it's a fucking hodgepodge of alien activity, Greg. And that's where people Area are getting, 51. That's where people are getting fucking sucked up and getting probed and, and whatnot. Or Whoa. some people say... That's where Lester went. I know. We're going to save that one for when Lester gets back. A lot of people are saying, too, it could be, could be Atlantis, right? Causing some fucking ruckus over there. Or uh, maybe, it maybe. could possibly be black holes pulling ships into different dimensions. I'm a fan of that theory because it, I, w- I would like to live in a universe that has different dimensions. You know, it adds a little fucking spice to life. You know what I'm saying? I, like, I also like living in a universe that has black holes. <laughs> Along with the different dimensions, it's a win-win. Thank you very much. I love my husband more than anything. Which is why I was surprised to find her sleeping with the teenager next door. Now I take each day one day at a time. I didn't know what I had till it was almost gone. Now I'm faithful and haven't terminated a pregnancy in over a year. I stopped obsessing about my weight. Now there's just more of me to love. They say America's fatter than ever. But when you're number one, it's time to celebrate. And why not celebrate with cake every day? Celebrate cake. And thank you for sticking around while we pay the bills. You can't pod Bangkok chambermaids. This is your host, Greg. Yeah, my man. buddy Dan here on the side. Oh, Lester shit. is out flogging the dolphins. Flogging the dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we are doing the segment now. Real talk. Got to let you know what's going on with the movies coming out. Movies, A couple movies. movies just came out on Blu-ray, DVD. What do we got? And, and 
dude, I'm telling you what, you and your 3D, I swear to God. <laughs> just just a little side note. Sam, it's actually, my, my, my old neighbor, Sam, and uh, his roommate, Rob, another buddy of mine, uh, they're coming over tonight, and we're going to watch Predator in 3D. So that should be interesting. Are you guys going to sing Kumbaya, light candles, and hold hands? Maybe. We'll see how it goes. Then I might come over. <laughs> <laughs> real talk though real talk i got two movie segments for you to, uh this week what you got at this show fellas uh the movie runner runner with uh justin timberlake ben affleck oh yeah i heard uh, about that how was that it, it wasn't bad i'm i have a hard time with ben affleck movies because every time i see him it's the same acting he hasn't changed since uh his early days um with uh what's his name uh matt damon like right. his acting styles never change. He has that. He he does so, have that real static type acting. You know, it's it, like he just doesn't do much for he, me. The whole storyline of the movie. He can't get away from himself. That's my right. You know. The whole storyline of the movie is actually a really cool idea. It's about uh, this this kid named Richie who uh, was a, a college student at Princeton, uh, having a hard time paying the bills. So he's like doing this online gambling. Uh, uh, recruiter kind of thing where he gets a, a certain amount of money for bringing people on board and getting them to gamble on certain sites. He goes down uh, to find Ben Affleck's character, Ivan Block, because Ivan Block runs like this huge, uh, unobtainable online gaming site out in Costa Rica, and the U.S. government can't touch him. So uh, it gets really hairy, gets really crazy. Uh, a lot of shit gets fucked up. Nice. Uh, there's a nice little twisted plot at the end of it. But uh, if you can get past Ben Affleck being in the movie, it's really good. Uh, IMDb rates it as a, a 5.6 out of 10. What are you rating, I disagree Greg? with that. Yeah, what are you rating? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to give it like an 8. Okay. If, if somebody else other than Ben Affleck was in it, I would give it a, like a, a 9. Wow. I would give so it a solid 9. Loses the whole point so, because of the Affleck. Yeah. <laughs> Affleck! <laughs> Hopefully, uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. We'll see what happens with this Superman Batman flick, right? Because now, yeah, now they just announced uh, Lex Lex Luthor as the kid from the Facebook movie. What's his name? Um, oh, uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so uh, he's shaved his head now. He's he's bald for the flick. Will you better be? You know. So. <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, and boom goes the dynamite. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, the other movie is Las Vegas. Oh and yeah, I've, I've been wanting to fucking. See, I wanted to see that man. That's with uh, everybody. <laughs> with, yeah, with Robert De Niro, Kevin Klein, uh, Morgan Freeman, and uh, what's his name, um, uh, Michael Douglas. Yeah, I, I'm going to tell you from the beginning of the movie to the very end of the movie, I laughed my ass off. Really. Now I laugh at a lot of comedies because I'm easy to make laugh. I because I, I I just laugh at everything. Shit is funny to me. I love life, so that's why I laugh. But this movie legitimately made me laugh my ass off. This was hilarious funny. Is that out? On, is, is that so out on Blu-ray? Funny. Is that out on Blu-ray now? Yes, and it is worth getting. It is worth buying. It, I would have bought it if I knew how funny it was instead of just renting it. Really. Hilarious. Wow. Love the movie. Nice. I laughed my ass off, dude. Robert De Niro and Morgan Freeman are funny. It Kevin seems Klein, like it seems like they're hilarious. all hilarious. It seems like they're all acting as like well, that's the thing. It it seems like they're not even acting. It just seems like it's all mm -mm. Of them just shooting the right. shit. Absolutely. It's like somebody just put a camera on someone's glasses and just reacted to the four of them being around each other. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Michael Douglas isn't really all that funny. He's just kind of there, but he does. A, he plays a good role. He plays a good part. He does a good job in the movie. He he helps. He's part of the glue that holds everything together. Kevin Klein is fucking hilarious. Hilarious in this movie. Solid ten. Really easily. Right out of the box. Yeah. Solid ten. Nice. Right out of the box. Solid ten. No fucking around. If uh, if I could go more than ten, I would go more than ten. Nice. So we'll have to check those out. are my real talk movie review two, for the, two reviews the show. because we've been gone. Is that, is that because we've been gone for two weeks? So you, you felt, yeah, I had to make up for not a being little, here. A little something extra. Ago. Right on. Yeah. A little something extra for the listeners out there. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for sticking around, hanging on real talk coming at you. Yeah. And you know, 
the funny thing is, is like when you listen to this podcast down the road as this show evolves, which it will, you're going to be able to go back and listen to these episodes <laughs> and, gonna, and it's going to sound, some things may sound the same. Some things may sound totally different. Some things may be totally gone. Um, but that's kind of the cool thing about being a early adapter to this podcast is that you're on this trip with us. You know, uh, you're the listener, we're the host, so to speak, but it's not even on a level like that. I feel like we're all just kind of along for the ride and to be able to go from episode to episode and then look back and to physically be able to see how it's evolved. It's just, it blows my hair back, you know? So that's why, speaking that's why of, I do it. You know, that's why I do this. And speaking of them being along on the trip with us, I think it's their turn to pay for the gas. <laughs> Yeah, man, sounds good because this shit's getting expensive. <laughs> yes, I can't drive this truck all this time with all these people on board and not have somebody else pay for the gas. Well, good thing we have a sponsor. That we Who's will, a sponsor? That we will talk about later. <laughs> oh, well, before we Stay move tuned. on to the yeah the next stuff, uh, sad news. Oh, speaking of, of movies, oh. uh, the unfortunate passing of. Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah. Uh, he was young, man. Uh, I'm going to say two things. Uh, I'm, my, my brother made this statement, and, and I kind of con- I concur with him. At, at the same time, I don't want to sound like cold-hearted. Uh-huh. Uh, no feelings. Uh, I'm sad that he's gone. It's a shame to lose him at the, the age that we did. Right. Uh, not even 50 years old. But... Uh, if yeah, it's a drug 26. overdose because of his drug use, yeah, uh, I can't feel sorry for that. No, you know, I mean, at the end, I, of, at the end of the day, you do everything to yourself, you know. And right, but at, but at the same time, I am sad to lose him. It sucks. Absolutely, he, dude. It, it he was sucks. a great actor, dude. That's Mission Impossible it, yeah. Three, Moneyball, The Big Lebowski. Yeah, I, I got mean, I got turned on to his style of acting and him as an actor. From uh, almost famous, you know, and I, yeah. I loved loved that flick, man. And you know, yeah. one of the clips from that flick really stood out to me, and uh, I just wanted to kind of bring that to show all of you, even though you can't fucking see it, you can hear it. So check it out. Here's a theory uh, for you to disregard <laughs> completely: uh, music, you know, true music, uh, not just rock and roll. It chooses you. You know, it lives in your car or, or alone, listening to your headphones you know, with the vast scenic bridges and angelic choirs in your brain. You know, it's a place apart from the vast, benign lap of America. It's quite an honor to have the world's greatest rock critic and editor of Cream Magazine back home in San Diego for a few days, Lester Bangs. The Doors? Or Jim Morrison? He's a drunken buffoon, posing as a poet. I like the doors. Ah, give me the guess who. Come on, they got the courage to be drunken buffoons, which makes them poetic. Uh, Give me some white light, white heat. Iggy Pop! Amen! (laughs) Oh, I just put this on. This isn't on your playlist either. I just think it's a little bit early for that. Not for me. No, that's... That's awesome. Yeah, you know that that was one of my favorite. He, that was one of my favorite scenes with him in that in that flick. Um, my favorite remembrance of, of him goes. You have to go back. Okay. You have to go back to the, to the late nineties, nineteen ninety eight. Okay. Patch Adams. All right. Right. Now, it, a lot of people, if you if you remember the movie Patch Adams, he played a serious student doctor who was caring about his education. He, he had no time for tomfoolery, and, and there was a certain guideline you followed as a doctor. Look, cut the crap, Hunter. I live with you. I know how much you study, or I should say don't study. And you do better than me. <laughs> Give me a break. You arrogant, pompous prick. Who appointed you custodian of the medical profession? Is it because your father was a doctor and his father was a doctor? Some sort of genetic thing? You're damn right. Really? You know, I grew up with it. I know what it takes to look in the eyes of dying people day after day after day and to come home for dinner at night. I know what it takes. You don't have it. Oh, really? And you do? If you don't like me, just say it. I don't like you! Mm-hmm. But you can see the transformation, transformation that he made in the movie where he, he went from being that serious uh, student that was learning to be a doctor 
to learning how to enjoy life and enjoy being a doctor and, and actually loving helping people and, and getting joy from it Yeah, absolutely. because of the way Patch Adams was. It was his, his role in that movie was really great. He, helped, he was a great supporting uh, cast member for Robin Williams, and I think he helped make that movie. He, he'll, he'll be missed. Sad. Totally, totally. Way too, way too soon to get let go. And one of his flicks, yep. we know one of his flicks, really kind of hits home to what we're doing right now. And that was pirate radio. Because if you shoot a bullet, someone dies. When you drop a bomb, many die. If you hit a woman, love dies. But if you say the F word, nothing actually happens. So here it comes, especially for you, the F word. First, though, this uh, very fine piece of music. Yeah. Remember that? He, yes. He was the, wow. He was the count. In pirate radio, so that know, was, I'm gonna. I gotta watch that. I'm gonna watch that movie again just for. Reasons. That was only five years ago. Not that even wasn't five years long ago. ago. Two thousand nine. That? that came out late. Two thousand nine. That came out right. November. Yeah. 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 I remember. Ah oh, man, that was such. Yeah, a, that, that was such a great movie. Now you want to talk about a celebrity that I don't really give a shit about that I'm tired of fucking hearing about. Uh, Richard Curtis. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll give you three guesses. The first two don't count. Uh, Polly Shore. Look, Kashmir Rajneesh, why don't you just chill? No, but still. Link and I are cruising the mountain, bro, and we figure we's a little juice. <laughs> okay, that's one guess that doesn't count. Uh, O.J. Simpson. <laughs> I can always listen to, uh, to stuff about O.J. Simpson. That's two <laughs> guesses that doesn't count. All right, here it is, your last and final guess. The celebrity that I can give two shits about, but is always on the fucking news. Justin Bieber. Nobody fucking needs ya. You wanna know why? I'll tell you why. Cause you're a little cunt. Fuck that dude. Oh! Oh, fuck that stupid little cunt rag. I swear to God, dude. I don't use that word very often, but fuck that little punk. I don't know anybody that gets to see that video. Let me tell you something. This little fuck it doesn't deserve 95 to 99.9% of what he's got. In the video, he's holding the Stanley Cup. And he's got his hands on the Stanley Cup. That's horse shit. First of all, he's an L.A. Kings fan. If you notice in the video, the picture where he's got his hand on the cup, he's in the Blackhawks uh, locker room. So fuck him. He doesn't deserve it for that reason alone because he's a, an L.A. fan and he's trading off to the Chicago Blackhawks because they won. Second of all, he's not a fucking hockey player in the NHL. He doesn't fucking deserve to touch that Stanley Cup. I'm a fucking lifelong Blackhawks fan and I don't even get to touch the Stanley Cup. He doesn't deserve to fucking touch it. But he's in there. He's fucking touching it. Fuck that little punk. It's not about anything else. Cause when you try it once, you want to try it some more try it some Size more. doesn't matter, and that's a fact It might be small, but it's a big impact Ooh. Bust a nut, bust a nut Grab a bag of corn nuts and bust a nut They're lightly toasted and hard as well Enjoy yourself, we won't tell Everybody does it, they like it a lot You can do it at school, just don't get caught, don't get caught. It takes a few minutes if you don't delay Take your time Nuts, an intensely crunchy corn snack, comes in seven nut busting flavors. Bust a nut at a convenience store near you. So, uh, so recently, man, the fucking Super Bowl, the kid flies into New York, New Jersey. Some people have been talking about this. He lands, right? He, well, he's not flying. He's not Harrison Ford. <laughs> he lands, his pilot lands his jet into the uh, New York, New Jersey airport. I'm not sure which one it was exactly. But anyway, plane touches down. FBI shows up. Knock, knock. Mr. Bieber, we, uh, we have reports that your pilots are having to wear fucking oxygen masks because there's so much fucking smoke on the plane. Yes. Did yes. you hear about this? What a this? fucking tool. What the fuck? He's a fuck? fucking idiot. How old is this little fucking punk? He's like, what is he, 20? 
His fucking, what did 21? you call him? His fucking, his dad's fucking Ed Hardy burnt to a crisp looking face? <laughs> no. Yeah, his dad, his dad looks like a fucking uh, Ed Hardy burnt mannequin. <laughs> so somebody needs to beat the shit out of him, yeah. and then he needs to go and spank the fuck out of his kid Some, and fucking straighten his ass out. Something needs to happen, man. This kid needs to just fucking decide to go on like a uh, marathon with a few pairs of scissors, as far as I'm concerned. First, he fucking rents a Lamborghini. And drives at 136 miles an hour and while his, his dad fucking dumbass dad is, one of is the blocking guys, off the yeah, road. Why one of his yeah? While his dad's blocking the fucking street, and and he gets caught on the video. And like if you see the video, it's like him and and two Hummers. Okay, first of all, why are you fucking racing a Hummer in a Lamborghini? And <laughs> second of all, if you watch the video. It doesn't even look like it's a real race. Like, they had it limited to, like, okay, uh, you guys can't go over 50 miles an hour because I don't want to get in trouble. And because they're all, like, right next to each other. Like, nothing's fucking happening. It's not a real race. It's just stupid. I, I don't know what the fuck happened there. And then he does this shit with a fucking plane. Maybe he was fucking p- flying and... The pilots had to wear oxygen masks because it was so smoky, so they couldn't fly, and he had to fly. Yeah, man, so that's just, that's fucking crazy. You know, anytime that happens, it's just messed up. So uh, Yeah, I don't know what the fuck's going on there. <laughs> who does, Greg? In, in the grand scheme of fucking life, who who really does? Am I right? Am the I Pope. Right? All right. Besides the Pope. Uh, so, uh, are you have you been to Vancouver recently, Greg? Uh, not in this lifetime. No, I, I, I've heard good things. <laughs> really? Ex- except for what I'm about to tell you <laughs> in Vancouver. This is, this is really happening. This is no joke in Vancouver. Crack pipe vending machines are now installed now today, right this second, as you're listening to this podcast, if you're in Vancouver, walk outside cause you'll, you'll get a crack pipe vending machine for 25 cents. You can purchase your own crack pipe. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. You know what, though? We're going to bring it a little closer to home because now You Can't Pod has its first ever on the street reporter. Greg, we've got somebody out there doing some legwork for us. Finally, you sent that bastard there. Finally taking a little fucking weight off our shoulders, and he's going out there yep. and putting in a little work of his own. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It is a pleasure to introduce to you Balls McFadden. Balls, take it away. A not-for-profit organization has installed crack pipe vending machines in Vancouver's troubled downtown east side neighborhood. The Portland Hotel Society is operating a pair of the machines which dispense Pyrex glass pipes for 25 cents a piece. Many programs provide pipes for drug users, but generally on a one pipe per person per day basis. The group says allowing users to buy as many pipes as they want will curb the spread of disease as fewer pipes will be reused. Greg, as you know, I'm, a, you know, I'm an avid traveler. Um, one of my favorite things to do while I'm out and about are finding signs, signs in the public, you know, signs on public display that are there to deliver a message. You know what I'm saying? Like, Sometimes right. you'll see a yeah. sign that says wet paint. Therefore, you know the walls are wet and the touch paint it. is wet. Don't touch it. Um, I like finding some of these no. signs. Some of these signs I come across, though, may have benefited from a little more attention before they went up. Maybe they, they should have thought a little bit harder before they did that. Maybe. Just a little bit because if they would have, it may have you know cut down on some confusion that these signs have caused. Um This is a little segment I like to call Obvious Travel Tips. I was at this place having dinner last night. There was a sign by the, you know, the hand dryer. Right. What does the sign say? Do not Uh, activate with wet hands. Well, really? what the fuck are you supposed to do? Glad I got my fucking black belt yesterday because I'm kicking this son of a bitch off the wall. <laughs> Maybe you don't put your dick away yet and slap it the butt with oh, your dick. Okay. Yeah, because that's going to probably not work for you. They didn't say anything about keeping it sanitary. They just said don't use wet hands. 
inside of a laundry room in Rome. In Rome, of all places, you think you you would think that things would get better. When in Rome. When in Rome, I would like to be there. Because <laughs> when in a laundry room in Rome, ladies, this is a sign, ladies, leave your clothes here and spend the afternoon having a good time. <laughs> You can't you can't make this shit up. <laughs> well, you could, but you could. I would like to. I'd like to have that sign. I would like to have that sign. You know, like those street signs that you see every once in a while. Like I remember there was a street sign by my old neighborhood. It was called Just a Mere Road. I don't know why, but I always thought that was so cool, and I always wanted to take that sign. But anyway, back to the signs. Back to the other signs. Back to the signs that make you fucking chuckle. In a dry cleaners <laughs> in Bangkok. Here's a sign for you. Drop your trousers here. For best result. <laughs> Do you, you really need to go any further than that? I, I can't think of it. No, that, that one does it. The, the elevator, Greg. The elevator of all places in Paris. Please leave your <laughs> values at the front desk. Oh, you wonder. And you wonder. You wonder how the fucking world keeps spinning. Because it's <laughs> shit like this. That gets out there, and you wonder why some people may do some things that they do. Maybe somebody saw a sign and it confused them. Don't be so quick to judge people. Maybe somebody just read a sign the wrong way. <laughs> I have nothing for you. I, <laughs> like, just, I got shit. <laughs> this just cro- this made my eyes cross. <laughs> and the only thing that I could think the whole entire time Good. that I'm laughing at all these, I'm thinking of Ace of Base. So that, that's pretty much it for this week, kids. Um, I don't really have anything else. It, it feels good to be back, and we will be back. It won't be another two-week break. That, I promise. Um, well, it'll be in, it'll be two weeks. Well, it'll be in two weeks. We, we'll, we are now back on our regular scheduled programming. Program. Every Monday. Thank you for that public service announcement. Yeah, no problem. Um, here's a little fun fact. FYI, iTunes, we're coming for you, bitches. By the end of March, you will be able to find You Can't Pod through iTunes. So thanks, Apple, for the hookup. We appreciate that. Uh, we do have some sponsors. They're not officially locked in yet. They, we're still waiting on our check. So as soon as our check clears, we'll be happy to bring you some great words from our sponsors. Like my good friend, Lord Alfred Hayes, would always say, promotional consideration paid for by the following. Oh, son of a bitty bit, son of a bitty bit, son of a bitty bit, the bit, a gun. <laughs> you thought I was going to say a son of a bitch, didn't you? <laughs> So, you know, very similar to a Marvel film, you know, when you stick around after the credits, you tend to get a little, little something extra because you, you stuck around after the credits. Well, this is our little something special for sticking around after the credits. Enjoy this little interview Greg and I did with none other than Stone Cold Steve Austin. Enjoy. Another one bites the dust by Queen is like a song that pretty much everyone knows. Um, and here's something that will surprise you completely. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to bring somebody to help us unpack all of this new information. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Steve, you do know. The song, Another One Bites the Dust, right? Yes, I have heard the song, Another One Bites the Dust. So, hey, Steve, you know what the first word of that song is, don't you? No, I do not. It's Steve. Is it? It is. Isn't it weird? I never knew the song was about a guy named Steve. Well, I I didn't either. Now I'm going to have to go back and uh, listen to it and try to sort through this and find out which Steve and why he was talking to him. So what it seems is that this song is like, I guess it's about a guy named Steve that's just walking in and fucking shit up. Hmm. I always took it as something different. I, I always thought, uh, well, I don't know. It's a good song to play before a football game. 
if you would have known, you, you could have pitched to Vince and said, like, as use that as your entrance. <laughs> yeah. Had I known it, it might have been a good one. It's, it, you know, that was, uh, you know, Queen was an awesome band, and, and that was a badass song. So, you know, Steve, you, you've been around forever, man, and you've had a few different finishes throughout your career. What was your favorite one to pull off? Well, probably my finish, which would be the Stone Cold Stunner. So, for those who have been living in a cave for the past 20 years, can you give us, you know, give them a brief explanation as to how that would roll out? Uh, you know, the setup move was you kick a guy in his stomach to kind of bend him over, and uh, as I was facing him, then I would turn around to face the same direction he is, place his chin on my right shoulder, secure it with both hands, and then drop down, land on my ass, driving my shoulder blade, my trapezius, into his throat, rendering him <laughs> pretty well stunned. So when, when you guys are doing new finishers, uh, how often does somebody really take on a, a like a serious injury? Uh, ninety nine point nine percent never. Uh, by and large, I mean, if you land wrong or if you land on one of your knees wrong, anything could happen. But by and large, that was probably one of the safest finishes you could take in the business. I, I could see that. I mean, you guys are professionals. Uh, what is the worst thing that has ever happened to you in the ring? Uh, it was, uh, I guess it was SummerSlam 97, and I got dropped on my head on a pile driver gone wrong. It was a transit quadriplegic for about 60 seconds in the ring uh, in front of 20,000 people and on pay-per-view. You know, I'm okay now. It was just a bad accident back in. Yeah, I remember seeing that. I remember seeing that on pay-per-view. Um, you know, when, when stuff happens, do you guys, I mean, besides just kind of stating the obvious, I mean, do you guys have like a code word or something, a signal? give the other guy you know if you're if you're fucked up mm, not really code word you kind of you know uh, you flat out tell a guy hey man I'm, I'm messed up and you know you never your goal is to never try to hurt anybody it is a very very physical form of entertainment and when you got guys in there 250 pounds plus moving at high rates of speed anything can happen sometimes it does so you've had you know like we said before you know we you've had a few different gimmicks throughout your time in the business have any have you ever had any in your head, or you know, any that just never made it through the curtain? Well, back in the day, you know, when I was growing up in South Texas, I was going to wrestle my brother in the yard of our house, and my name was the Western Fandango. Now, how and why I came up with the Western Fandango <laughs> is beyond me at this time in my life. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the Western Fandango and maybe what he would have been like? Had you used him in your professional career? I, I don't have any idea. I was thinking I was about nine or ten years old, and I don't even know how the name popped into my head, but it did, and it sounded cool. What a Western Fandango would look like or act like, <laughs> I could not tell you. Yeah, the, you know, the Western Fandango stunner really doesn't carry as well as the Stone Cold stunner. Definitely not. Probably a little bit different character. But I think Stone Cold Western Fandango, that would be kind of cool. Come on now. Yeah, it may be a little complicated. This has been great. Thanks, Steve. We appreciate it. Steve, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. Austin 316 forever. Yeah, you guys are welcome. Y'all take care. Have a good day.